What's up everybody, this is Midnight Strike 3625 back from the dead, or so it would seem, as I haven't uploaded in over a month. And that wasn't entirely intentional, just because of the fact that I had a lot of stuff going on at the time, but some parts of it were, as I had a lot of motivation issues with the platform on which I am uploading. So, basically for all intents and purposes, this is my review of the new ACDC album, their comeback album, long awaited, the album that really should not even exist, and that is Power Up. The first album that ACDC has put out since the death of Malcolm Young, Rest in Peace, in 2017, to which this review, much like the album is, will be dedicated to. So rest in peace, Malcolm Young. You were an absolute legend, and you created one of the best hard rock bands in history. So to get into it, this is probably my favorite album that ACDC has put out since Flick of the Switch. Objectively speaking, I would say it's probably the best album since The Razor's Edge, as they did have a couple of good songs in between The Razor's Edge and Flick of the Switch, but Razor's Edge kind of put it over the edge haha, so to speak, with songs like Money Talks, Thunderstruck, um, Are You Ready, the, the main ones, Fire Your Guns, and of course the title track on that album. They were very massive heavy hitters, but as far as my favorite goes, I would say Power Up definitely beats that album when it comes down to it. This review is going to be formatted into two parts in the same video. The first part I'm going to be talking about the album itself and the issues that I have with it along with what I absolutely love about this brand new album. And I'm going to do a track by track and all that good stuff. The second part I'm going to be talking about the overall package. I just got this on Amazon today. Absolutely hyped for it. And I listened to it last night because ACDC uploaded the entire album to their YouTube page. I love it. <laughs> Absolutely love it. So, basically, this is the first album to be released since 2014's Rock or Bust. And it is six years ago, pretty much to the day, give or take a month or two, I guess, since that album was released. And it's already the second longest gap between ACDC albums. Before that, we had eight years between Stiff Upper Lip and Black Ice, and we also had six, or no, five years, excuse me, between The Razor's Edge and Ball Breaker, albeit we had a live album in between there, and five years in between Ball Breaker and Stiff Upper Lip. So to say that ACDC has been sort of resting on their laurels would be an understatement. In fact, it would be the understatement of the last 20 to 30 years. But that's not necessarily a bad thing, because every ACDC album that comes out sounds moderately similar to what they have produced in the past. That's not a critique, and it's also not necessarily a point of praise, it's just an objective fact. ACDC's motto that should be printed on the bottom of every single one of their studio albums is, If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That is a praise, because ACDC does what no other band could possibly do, is take the simplest of melodies and the simplest of power chords and structures of the songs overall, and turn it into something that you can listen to over and over and over again on repeat without it getting old. And they had a similar issue in 1980 when it comes to changes, because up until then they had been tweaking their formula and experimenting a little bit between um, glam and hard rock and stuff like that. And they settled on the hard, gritty, edgy rock in uh, 1975 with TNT, which we had got into actually a couple months ago with Bon Scott. But in 1980, everything changed when Bon Scott passed. And the reason I bring this up is because this album is the most consequential album that is marred with the most drama since 1980's Back in Black. And that is because it also involves the death of a band member. That just happened to be their singer, Bon Scott, who was promptly replaced with Brian Johnson. I'm actually kind of surprised that they came out with Back in Black so soon after. I'm surprised they didn't wait another year or two. But I digress. This album is very similar, and it's marred in much of the same drama and controversy that Rock or Bust before it was marred with, because Malcolm Young doesn't appear 
physically at least, on either of those albums. The last album to feature Malcolm Young on is Live at River Plate, which I might actually revisit and re-review, because in my first review, it was before Malcolm Young had come down with dementia, and I kind of want to bring that into the review and bring that into focus and take that into consideration when it comes to the overall product, product itself, because that is the last studio album with Malcolm Young on it. This album <clears throat> still has hints and traces of Malcolm Young's work, because every single song on this album, from Realize all the way down to Code Red, has riffs from Malcolm Young on it. Stevie Young is the one that plays them, but Malcolm Young is the credited writer, along with Angus Young. So, Malcolm Young still lives on in Power Up. Is this going to be the last studio album by ACDC? Well, I wouldn't be lying if I said it could be. I said the exact same thing about Rock or Bust six years ago. I said that it could be the last studio album, and for all intents and purposes, it should have been. Because this album, I know I keep holding it up, I'm just so excited. This album shouldn't even exist. The band was in a state of turmoil in 2016 after probably the most consequential album since Back or Black at that time, Rock or Bust, was released two years prior to that. Because of the hearing issues that Brian Johnson had, ac had accumulated since uh, being on the racetrack and not wearing the proper hearing protection, he couldn't sing. He couldn't even hold a tune. If you listen to this, the concerts from the beginning of 2015 to the mid parts of 2016, there's a huge incremental difference. He can't hardly sing. He can't hold a tune. He can't hold a pitch. And that is an absolute shame. So they had to sack him. Well, people, myself included, were so mad about it that we didn't really want to listen to ACDC ever again. And we didn't really see the replacement, which was revealed to be Axl Rose, as being a, a suitable member of the band. At the time, we didn't know that Brian Johnson was going to be coming back into the fold. We thought that ACDC for all intents and purposes, was over. ACDC, as we knew it, was done. They were going to retire gracefully, hopefully after the tour, and take a long needed retirement period because they were pretty much done at that point. But Angus Young didn't, want, didn't see it that way. He said, and I quote, we're sort of more like a brand. We're not really a band, really. We're more of a brand, like Kiss which was pretty much antithetical to every single thing that they ever stood for. So I was pretty upset at the way that they were approaching this this tour, I, would, I should say. So I didn't really see it as a legitimate ACDC period, a period of in ACDC. And then they took a hiatus after 2016, and we were thinking that this album, Power Up, shouldn't exist. We were thinking there was going to be no, be no more albums, and if there was, it was going to have Axl Rose on vocals, because word around the grapevine was that Axl Rose became an official member of ACDC in September of 2016. And then, of course, you had other members like Cliff Williams leaving, and Phil Rudd was out due to stuff that had happened in 2014, with uh, hiring a hitman to procure murder, essentially. So, like I said over and over again, ACDC to that point, was pretty much done. In my mind, at least. Cliff was gone, Brian was gone, Phil was gone, and it was pretty much... Malcolm was gone, and it was pretty much just a shit show at that point, I'm not gonna lie. So, then Malcolm Young dies. Malcolm Young dies in 2017, I think it was November of 2017, or something like that. And I remember it quite vividly, hearing it on the radio, and my jaw just dropped. I mean... I expected it to be soon because uh, my grandma, before she passed, was suffering with dementia. Dementia and Parkinson's disease that eventually claimed her life, but it was just still so hard to hear about. One of my childhood idols of my early teen years just passing like that. You know, even though I somewhat expected it, it was still hard because he was such an influence on my musical choice, on my musical taste. So... I gotta give credit where credit is due. Even though Malcolm Young plays the most simplest of riffs, he has this technique about him where you can listen to 
anything on the radio or anything by ACDC on any of the CDs, and you can instantly tell it's him. I mean, Scott Ian said it best. Even though it's simple, he takes something that's so simple and makes it into something that's signature for ACDC. And it's no different here. And in a way, Malcolm Young actually organized the reformation of ACDC. Because when it comes to the soul of ACDC, when it comes to just the point of everything, the music, ACDC reigns supreme when it comes to hard rock. So, like I said, Malcolm Young organized the Reformation because they, the band members met up at his funeral in 2018 and decided, you know what, let's give it another go. At that point, Brian Johnson had this little device in his ear that allowed him to sing and actually carry a tune. So, the rest is history. ACDC's Power Up came to be on Friday the 13th, November 2020. So how's the music? Basically, the album kicks off with Realize, and that is honestly one of my favorite songs on this album. I love the beats. I love the guitar solos. It doesn't really do too much with uh, long, drawn-out guitar solos. It's more like play ball with the small, short, little guitar licks thrown in there over the rhythm section, which you can obviously tell were written by Malcolm. And Stevie Young does an absolutely fantastic job at recreating what Malcolm left behind. And I love the singing, I love the vocals. Um, one of my favorite parts is when Brian Johnson says, I got the power to hypnotize. I mean, it just, it's so simple, and it's so lyrically, lyrically simple, I should say, too. But ACDC has the power of pulling it off. And it's the same goes for Rejection. Rejection is another one of my favorites on here. Um, and the other one, Shot in the Dark, is definitely the highlight of the album. I gotta say, Shot in the Dark is the highlight of the album. It's got the most signature intro. It has this have a drink on me sort of feel to it with uh, the bluesiness of the song. And it's very heavy hitting. And I gotta admit, when I first heard it, I had to listen to it about five or six more times. I just kept mashing that repeat button on YouTube because it's one of the best songs, if not the best song on the album. I gotta say it's the strongest point. Uh, the next song is Through the Mists of Time. And I gotta say, this is a testament to the weird names on this album. I gotta say, the albums have all, all have this uh, similar naming format to it. Every, every album basically has to have the songs with rock in the name, but this has the weirdest names for the tracks since, I believe, for those about to rock, We Salute You, when you had Night of the, Night of the Long Knives and Breaking the Rules and Spellbound, and it just has a dark, eerie, black magic sort of feel to it, you know, through the mists of time. It's a really great song. It's got really good, um, really good guitars to it. The overall production of it definitely shines when it comes to this song. It's a little short, but other than that, I really like it. Uh, the next song, Kick You When You're Down. I gotta say, the chorus is the best part when he's repeating, I gotta kick you when you're down. That is my favorite part of the song. And it's le a little less um, influenced by the guitars. I mean, the whole album is guitar driven, but this one is more suited for the vocals. I definitely love it, and it is a repeat, a must-repeat song for me. The next song, which is Spell, same thing with the tracklist naming, a very dark feel to it. Kind of reminds me of For Those About to Rock, We Salute You, how it had that overall heavy and dark punch to just the overall feeling of the song. And it's got really good lyrics, it's got really good vocals by Brian Johnson, and it has... This sort of appeal to it that, like I said, reminds me of For Those About to Rock, We Salute You. There's a lot of uh, reminiscence on this album that sort of take you back to the band's heyday, uh, much like I mentioned on Shot in the Dark, having to do with Have a Drink on Me. The next song is Demon Fire, and this song has a Safe in New York City vibe to it, combined with Ball Breaker. No, Caught With Your Pants Down. Ball Breaker and Caught With Your Pants Down a little bit. In the beginning, it has sort of that stiff upper lip, you know, when I was out on a drive. He, he, he gets that low pitch in his vocals, Brian Johnson does, like he uses on the songs 
Stiff Upper Lip, Hail Caesar, um, what's, what's another one? Basically, like, Hail Caesar, Boogeyman especially, off of uh, Ball Breaker, and it definitely fits. When I first heard the teaser of this song, the day before Halloween, I actually thought that it sounded more like Baptism by Fire, which is kind of funny since they both have the word fire in the names of the tracks, but when it comes down to it, I think that little part sounds like Baptism by Fire, but it's such a little part that I couldn't really judge on that one part. I couldn't really judge the whole song based on that. So I think it does have much reminiscence of Caught With Your Pants Down and Safe in New York City, at least the better parts of Stiff Upper Lip. It's a very bluesy song, and it's one of my favorites as well. Uh, the next song is Wild Reputation, and it is the shortest song on the album, or at least one of the shortest, and it's one of the faster-paced ones that really reminds me of the songs that would really get you pumped up on, say, Flick of the Switch or The Razor's Edge. It's got that appeal to it. Um, it's got a really in-your-face, heavy-hitting chorus as well with Brian Johnson, and the rhythm, the rhythm guitars are just absolutely out of this world. Um, the next one is No Man's Land, and it slows it down just a tiny bit. Same thing, great song. Not necessarily one of my favorites on the album, but it's definitely up there. The next song is Systems Down, and this one, I like it. It's got a, its chorus really packs a punch, but overall I felt like it was a little bit too similar to some of the other songs that we have already heard on the album. So it was good in its own right, and I enjoyed listening to it on its own, but when listening to it in conjunction with the rest of the album, it just felt very redundant. But that would be Undone with Money Shot, which has probably one of the more memorable intros in ACDC's catalog, and it has a bluesy effect to it, especially in the beginning. And the chorus is just as heavy-hitting as Systems Down, or System Down, I should say and it is one of the better songs on the album. Thus ending the album with Code Red right here. One of the best songs on the album, and I know I say that about like three quarters of the album, but it's so true. This is one of the best songs on the album. It's fast paced, heavy hitting. The rhythm guitars are where they need to be. There's a lot of great stuff happening with the leads from Angus Young, and everything just comes together for the perfect closer of the album. I still say that Shot in the Dark is probably my favorite song on the album, and it's one of my favorite ACDC songs overall, and I'm surprised I'm saying that about a recent ACDC offering. Most of what I feel about ACDC is they've created some really great stuff after Flick of the Switch and after The Razor's Edge, but none of it has been as heavy-hitting or impactful as what has come before that. But this album really surprised me, I gotta say. I expected it to be more of the same with Rock or Bust and Black Ice, um, Ball Breaker, Stiff Upper Lip, you know, Fly on the Wall, Blow Up Your Video, but I was actually pleasantly surprised that it was better than that. And I'm probably going to get a lot of flack for saying this, but I like this album more than The Razor's Edge. I may not like, say, Money Shot more than Thunderstruck, or Money Shot more than Money Talks, System Down more than, what's another song off there, The Razor's Edge. But overall, the overall package, I gotta say, I like it more than The Razor's Edge. <laughs> I mean, that's just, it's weird to say. I still can't believe it myself. So... Objectively, I would say that The Razor's Edge is a better album, but overall, I gotta say, it's a 9 out of 10. I mean, I absolutely love it, and the package that it comes in is really badass, too, and it actually helps with my rating a little bit. Um, the music itself is definitely a 9 out of 10, and this is pretty awesome, too. So, this is the package that it came in the ACDC Power Up album, and I'm going to show it to you here in its entirety. So, I got this right here, and it actually came with this too, right here. There's a little button right there. Hang on a second. So, I got to show you this package in its entirety, including the piece that I tore off, which you're supposed to tear off so it's not broken. So, the package came like this. It had this little piece right here. 
which is barely hung on. So when you take this off, you see an, a button right there. I'm not going to press it yet. But then you open up this little flap right here. There's the album right there. And this is where the cord was right in there. So when you shut the flap, press the button, it lights up. You guys have probably already seen this. I don't want to get a copyright strike. So, it plays the beginning parts of Shot in the Dark. That is awesome. I have never seen anything like that before. So, basically, when it comes down to it, this album is awesome. The packaging is awesome. The one thing that I have, the one gripe, the one issue that I have with this song, with this album, the, and its packaging, is the fact that it comes in one of these cheap little digipacks right here. And I hate these kind of digipacks. If you look at it, there's no plastic casing on it. So basically what you're left with is a CD... And you can already tell one of the problems I'm having right here with the, the album's booklet coming out. I'm just going to take it out right now, show everyone. <coughs> and in order to get the CD out, you have to squeeze it, squeeze the, end, the edges, and then it'll come out. If I can get it out. There. There's the CD right here. So, that's kind of shit. Especially when it comes to um, the deterioration of different cardboards and stuff like that. Like, I have an example. My If You Want Blood, You've Got It CD. Look at how that's deteriorating and coming apart. But at least it has a plastic case right there, plastic piece, to put the CD. And I don't have to worry about the CD falling out. Or anything like that. I've hated it, and I've had CDs like that ever since Worship Music, and that's really the only thing that I have against the packaging of this album. So, when it comes down to it, power up, right here, 9 out of 10. It is one of the best albums that ACDC has produced. I am so shocked I'm saying that. And I absolutely love it. It is the most consequential album since Back in Black. And Rock or Bust was too, but this is definitely, just like Back in Black was a tribute to Bon Scott, this is a tribute to Malcolm Young. Malcolm Young, we salute you. Keep calm and rock on.